because we aren't looking at uh, storytelling and film for the web in, in a way that's generally exclusively and explicitly for the web. Um, we're still thinking of, of telling stories linearly and sort of arcs and endings and satisfying things like that when one, that's, that's not how we think and two, that's not how we interact digitally. Um, so it makes no sense to me. I think the whole web is about to change in terms of the way that we communicate because I was, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, the, the early web was mainly text, which is a bit weird because if you think about the way that, that we communicate, we communicate primarily with a part of our brain that is, that is emotional when we're, when we're not communicating in text, when we're face to face. Um, but the web has, has forced us you know, up until maybe the last five years or so to really, really communicate in um, a text-based way. And now all of a sudden, because, you know, programming languages have evolved and technology and infrastructure have evolved, um, mobiles have become so much part of our life uh, that we're at this place where we are going to be communicating more more emotively. We're, we're coming into the visual web. Um, and we're going to communicate differently and want to communicate differently. Um, interactive film tools offer us that, that opportunity. Hey, we all tell stories all the time. Um, it's just that the way, the way I see social is that it allows us to tell stories more often, I think, than, than maybe we do otherwise. Um, but not not full stories. It allows us to send a clip out there. Um, so I'm talking about clip as text, clip as snapshot of someone's life. And then those stories, um, the way that the stuff that we send out interacts um, between other people, um, it's really interesting to watch that because it's almost like we're constructing um, non-linear narratives with them. Yeah, it is, it is all about the journey um, and the context, but also the meaning that we layer on top of that. Um, visual media, uh, and rich media in particular, gives us an opportunity to layer meaning um, and actually understand and communicate a layered meaning in a way that we haven't before. I think interactive video gives us the opportunity to contextualize trivial video in a way that we haven't before. I think it's, it's a way to find meaning um, in things and in clips of people's lives that may be, you know, inconsequential to them or to other people or even um, to ourselves until one of two things happens. Either someone else makes it part of a mashup or links to it, um, or we go back and look at it a while later. Um, sort of curation as a meme, but in, you know, the... I hate using curation in that context. I think the opportunity that uh, nonlinear has um, for not only individuals, because they can create something that's incredibly self-referential, um, or really relate to a story or a topic in a really self-referential way, um, but what it offers, I think, brands and businesses is that um, it allows their customers to find a place in sort of the space of their product in a way that hasn't really been done well before or has been disjointed because even if people participate in memes, right, um, they're still throwing those, those things at platforms that are that are linear, that are kind of disjointed, that are difficult to link up. What I think is that people haven't figured out how to solve the problem of adequately tracking people's journeys through media and through the web and how to not only conceptualize what that should look like, but to actually put it into a UI. Um, <laughs> except, of course, for me and my, <laughs> my interactive video or film tool that I'm developing, but that's, um, that's just me. Um, Linear has a place in, in convergence in the sense that it will find its niche and its, its market, but I think that I'm just, I'm ready to change things and I'm ready to, um, to tell stories differently.